Hello all, I'm Dr. Neema Bhatt, a hematologist, BMT physician and pediatric oncologist. Um, I have spoken to you before this about a procedure called bone marrow transplantation where we find HLA match donors and for patients who are suffering from various blood disorders, we uh, you know take the stem cells from the donor who is HLA matched and give it to the patient and try to cure them of their blood related disease. So what happens after the patient has undergone bone marrow transplant? Most doctors, after you know, when you when you meet them for a bone marrow transplant, they walk you through all the details of how the transplant was done, how the patient is prepared for you know bone marrow transplant, uh, how exactly the procedure happens. But not many people would probably touch upon what are the precautions you should take after you have undergone a bone marrow transplant. The main things I'll be talking about that patients should take care of is uh, precautions to be taken in patients who have undergone either allogenic transplant or autologous transplant. So autologous transplant is a type of transplant where you, uh, you know, are getting stem cells from your own body after receiving medications. Allogenic transplant is where we use an external donor. So main precautions for a patient once they're discharged from uh, the bone marrow transplantation center is for the patient to stay as close to the transplant center as possible for at least the first three months. The first three months post-transplant is considered a very critical period where uh, the patient who has undergone a BMT procedure, bone marrow transplantation procedure, is considered to be at a high risk for infections. They are also at risk for the most common complications post-transplant, which is graft versus host disease or rejection. So a lot of physicians or primary care physicians may not be in tune with, you know, what, what exactly are the complications that can come immediately after a patient undergoes bone marrow transplant. So it's important that these patients who have undergone BMT stay close to the center where, you know, the BMT has been conducted. So the right doctors can manage the complications in the right manner. And it's identified the, you know, at the earliest possible so that the correct treatment can be initiated. Apart from this, what precautions has to be taken as far as food goes. So once you've undergone BMT, your body is a little immunocompromised, which means your immune system that helps you fight off infections is a little subdued. It's not it's at its 100% uh, yet. It takes about three to six months for it to come back to normal. So in these first three to six months, when you're also on medicines called immunosuppression to uh, help you engraft well or uh, you know keep, preserve the transplant graft well, you have to make sure to avoid outside food because you don't know how it has been cooked because uh, food can be a major source of infection. You have to make sure to drink water in the right way, which means it has to be boiled for at least five minutes and then cooled down and then consumed. Preferably if it is RO or UV sterilized or treated water, it is better to avoid infections. Um, whenever you're going out of the house or you know your living quarters, you have to make sure to keep a mask on. It doesn't have to be an N95 mask, it can be a regular mask. Uh, try to avoid going to crowded areas like malls or theaters or large weddings or functions where a lot of people are expected because as I said, uh, the patients who have undergone transplants are still are immunocompromised. So it's important for you to uh, protect yourself from patients, other people who may have, you know, uh, either a normal cold or a cough or any sort of other infection because what is probably a cough or a cold for a normal person would affect you in uh, a big way and can also be life-threatening immediately post-transplant. Apart from this, you can consume all foods. Um, we, we sort of say for the first three months, maybe avoid uh, you know, non-vegetarian food because it can be very difficult or uh, tricky to clean in the right way. So as much as possible, uh, consume freshly prepared food that is hot off the stove um, and uh, not stored for too long. Try to avoid taking refrigerated foods, especially if they've been refrigerated for more than a day because they can harbor infections. Uh, vegetables and fruits if consumed have to be washed at least you know, thoroughly at least two times with fresh running water so that uh, they don't have any infection. We uh, encourage to take fruits that have thick peels so that um, you know the, the, the chances of fungal infection or infection from uh, chemicals or medicines that have been treated to make these fruits consumable can be avoided. Um, other than this, you are free to lead a normal life. Always make sure to take your medications with you wherever you're traveling because uh, medicines that are started for a transplant patient immediately post-transplant are extremely vital for the graft to be maintained. And you have to have a list of the medications you're taking in your bag all the times and all the medicines with you uh, without fail. Apart from this, also have an emergency number, number you know, to be uh, contacted in case you have a high-grade fever, vomiting, loose stools, uh, feeling of weakness, 
um, losing blood, uh, either in the urine or stools, a severe headache. And these are the symptoms that I'm sure would be told to you by your transplant center. But these are the main salient things that you have to remember if you're a transplant patient and um, you want to know what precautions to take uh, you know, immediately post-transplant. If you have any further questions about bone marrow transplants or precautions to be taken by transplant patients, please feel free to reach out to me. I'm Dr. Meema Bhatt, hematologist and transplant physician. Thank you.